This is, this is, this is. I don't know. I looked at it and honestly, like it had, it had you written all over it. All right, so there's a dead bird in the freezer, and I'll tell you about that in just a second. MXPX.com, we got tickets, I think, available for our show in Tacoma this weekend, Saturday, July 27th, 2024, Tacoma, Washington, the Airport Tavern. It's part of a grand opening of a new bigger venue, but this bigger venue is a new punk venue, so it's not too big. It's not very big. It's actually a pretty small space for what MXPX usually does, so... If there's tickets still available by the time you hear this, go to mxpx.com, find that link, get those tickets. We'll see you this Saturday, July 27th. We're going to do a set. I haven't put it together yet with the guys. We don't know what we're doing, but I know we're going to do a bunch of new songs. We're going to do a bunch of deep cuts. We're going to do something different than what we've been doing in Bremerton and with no effects and all that. So I just don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be fun. It's going to be different. The Drowns are going to be there with us. Uh, I've been talking to the Rev for for many years now, watching the Drowns tour all over the world. They play Seattle. They're from Seattle, Washington. And finally, they're going to be playing with MXPX. So it's going to be a celebration. Shout out to Dano. He owns and runs the Airport Tavern. He's a longtime friend of ours and a really good guy in the music business and in punk rock. I love what he's doing in Tacoma and just in Washington State in general for music. It's great. So uh, tickets hopefully are gone. Hopefully they're sold out by now. But if they're not, make sure you get yours. All right. MXPeaks.com. We have merch, summer merch, tank tops, shorts, beach towels, things like that. And, of course, your regular vinyl of, of your favorite records, CDs, the new albums on a bunch of different variants. If you haven't already listened to Find A Way Home, please Add it to your music library. Go check it out. Listen to at least one song. It's track one. Track, you know, if you haven't already heard Stay Up All Night, you got to hear that. Um, but let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it a little bit. If you want to call in, leave a message, leave a voicemail for me. I'll put you on the podcast. I'll get to you. Um, we still have some voicemails in the queue. We're not going to get to everything today. We're going to get to some stuff pertaining to the Bremerton shows and probably no effects show in Portland with MXPX. So, before we get to that, let's get to the dead bird in the freezer. The number, 360-830-6660. All right, dead bird in the freezer. This was a month ago. This was at least a month ago. This is probably more than a month ago. This is two months ago. I came home from an MXPX trip or a Goldfinger trip. It might have been Goldfinger on the East Coast. I was... Uh, I was we were in, in Florida, and I flew home from Florida, the Orlando Ska Show. Could have been Denver Ska Show, but I think it was Orlando. No, 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 this was Orlando. It was that far back. And I get back to Bremerton. The family's in Texas, so I'm back in Bremerton because MXPX has some shows that we're rehearsing for, so it's, it's busy. So uh, sometimes I go to Waco, sometimes I go to Bremerton. That's not what's important here. What's important is I'm the only one in the house. I come in. Right when I come in, it's like dusk. Sun's going down. It's a beautiful evening. It was a nice drive. Very peaceful. Go in the door. Normally, you know, for the the families around, the dogs are going to greet me. No dogs, no nothing. Silence. Silence in an old house. And I walk in. And just as I walk in, I hear... and. See out of the periphery of my eye, like in the, in the far reaches of the back of the house, you can, I could almost see from the front door the back, of the, the back window, and thud, a bird hits the window. And I'm like, whoa. And, and I wasn't sure it was a, what it was when it happened because I was kind of startled by it. And I was like, what is that? And I ran, and of course it's a bird. Now and again, just at the right time of day, those windows are reflecting and the sun's low and it you can't tell that that's a window of course it looks like a building to me so i don't know why they're flying through a building but um that's not what we're here to talk about the stupidity of birds the bird hits the window it's on its back it's laying there and i'm and it's not moving and i walk up slowly i look and it it starts kind of twitching a little bit it's twitching and its eye opens, bing, and it's looking right at me. And I'm looking at this thing going, 
okay, hey, buddy, maybe you're going to survive. And so I'm kind of invested in this bird, this, this uh, Jimmy the Crow, let's call him. He wasn't a crow. He's a little small. He was more like a robin um, or a sparrow, uh, about the size of my, my hand like this, you know, like, like the body was like the size of my hand. And it just it looked like a nice bird, but it was it was tripping out and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give you some time and I kinda walked back and I walked back and I I, I basically went ahead and did a few things because I would had just arrived and I went up to the window from inside the house and looked at him or her. I don't know what the gender was. Hard to tell. Um, hard to tell for me. I don't know. Is there an expert out there? You tell me. Um, <laughs> and it's still twitching a little bit. I'm like, okay. I wait a little bit longer. 45 minutes goes by. I go back out there. Bird didn't make it. No. No. So... I'm like, what do I do with this bird? Um, I take it, and I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bury this bird. I take it, and I'm like, except for I'm not gonna bury it tonight because the sun had already gone down by then. I'll wait. I put it in a bag, plastic bag, like a grocery bag, tie it up. Uh, I put a paper towel around it and pick it up. I'm st it's it's a nice bird. It's very beautiful and soft. It, it, I didn't need the paper towel, but I just put it in there, so so that I, I don't know. I just did that. So put it in there with the paper towel inside the plastic bag. Probably didn't want to get my hands dirty. <laughs> you know, I washed my hands anyway after this. So I went down and I put it in the freezer because I okay, I'll, I'll bury it tomorrow, and I don't want the bird to start smelling. So. I put it in the bottom freezer in the basement where we don't really go to very often. And I was telling Tom Tuchilla about it on a phone call that night, later that night. And he's like, you're going to forget. You should set an alarm. You should do something. I'm like, I I'll, I'll get it. I mean, they're not going to be back for like a month. You know, I'll be, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be able to remember eventually. And well, we all know how that goes. So yesterday I was uh, riding. We, I was in Moscow, Idaho and uh, last week. And, and, and so this was yesterday, last week. Uh, Moscow, Idaho for a brand build. And I'll get into some of those details in a little bit as well. But I got a text from my wife. All of a sudden, when I, I was on my way and I was, I was in the middle of a conversation and I literally just burst out laughing and exclaimed and the text was this is uh yesterday at 10 30 a.m why is there a dead bird in the freezer wtf <laughs> uh and i said oh dang <laughs> it's a long short story and she said can't wait in the meantime can i get rid of it in all caps. And I said, yes, you can. Cry laughy face. And all I can do is just think back to when Tom said, you're going to forget. You're going to forget. And then she sends that, she sends a screenshot to Tom, to Chilla. Uh, and then TC goes, oh, dude, I know this story. I knew he'd forget. I literally told him, you're going to forget. And he said, no, I won't, because Holly will find it, and I don't want her to be mad at me. So at least he thinks about not upsetting you, which is kind of a win. And then she replied with, cry, laugh, emoji face. Uh, dead bird in the freezer. I don't know what's next, but that was months ago. Months ago, and I had completely forgotten about it. And here we are, dead bird in the freezer. And she said that she... All right, so from your perspective, <laughs> what, was, what was the experience like? 
the experience. Oh, hi, Turn. Um, okay, so I was going to, <laughs> to the basement <laughs> to fi to get some ice, I guess, is what I was doing. And um, I... It's our extra freezer. So we have a freezer downstairs that's, you know, it's kind of like a beer fridge, except it's just got everything in it that we can't hold in the upstairs fridge. So I went down there to get some ice, to put in a cooler, and I saw a bag, like a, like a grocery bag. Um, and it was just like kind of tied up. I don't know. I looked at it and honestly, like it had, it had you written all over it. The situation. I knew that I didn't like. <laughs> you knew you, it wasn't you. You didn't forget about it. This was something that I had done. Yeah. Like I would never just put like a Target bag or a Walgreens bag or whatever tied up in the freezer. So I knew I was suspicious already at this point seeing it tied up like that and just like thrown into the bottom of the freezer. So I, uh, against my better judgment, I pulled it out, put it on the floor and opened it. And when I opened it, like the first thing that I saw was like a paper towel. So I thought, okay, well maybe there's like food under this paper towel. And I reached in to the bag and I moved the paper towel and felt dead bird claw scrape against my hand and Frozen. that's when I knew whatever was happening in this moment to me you did it <laughs> uh, somehow I just me. knew I, yeah I mean it's always you <laughs> every time I find myself in a situation like this it's you you did this so I cleaned my hand and grabbed my phone and texted you. Hey, Dad. What I texted you and just said, why is there a dead bird in the freezer? WTF. And I waited. And I knew, like, you were out of town. You're going to go. You're on a panel. You're, like, speaking on a panel. And so in my mind, I was envisioning, envisioning you sitting on this panel, surrounded by a bunch of other dudes, feeling my text come in, looking at your phone and just like this moment of realization hitting you like, oh, which is in fact what you texted back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was not in the panel. I was actually on my way there, but I was in the middle of like a, con like a serious conversation. Not serious, but a conversation, like full on. And that, and then I completely hijacked the conversation because I started going, "What? Oh no!" <laughs> so yeah, so there's just a fully formed dead bird in this in this grocery bag in the freezer. So you text me back, which you texted back, and said it's a long, short story. And of course, because of course it is, right? And so I texted you back and was like, yeah, I'm sh like, can't wait. In the meantime, in all caps, can I get rid of it? And you're like, yeah. So then I put it back in the freezer. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? But guess what? I didn't vindicated. forget. No. Vindication. That's the thing. You don't forget. I put it back in the freezer because I was right in the middle of a lot of things with the kids. And trash day, luckily, was mm -hmm. today. The very, or Yeah, today. And so I obviously, like any normal person would do, went back for it, retrieved it, put it in the garbage. Which, can, let's just rewind here because the... I assume you've already told the story of like how it came to be. Yeah. But my first thing when you explained that to me today was, babe, like, okay, that's really sad that the bird died. I get it. You were sad about it. But this is the circle of life. Like, if you leave it there overnight, it's going to be gone the next morning. Like, a cat or whatever is going to come and take that bird away. That's food for some other animal. But you wanted to bury it. I wanted to bury it. I wanted to give it a proper burial. What were you thinking? I don't know. I, I reverted back to childhood, I think. So this is just like, I mean, I texted, I sent this screenshot to my sister, and I'm just like, 
<laughs> this is exactly what it's like to be married to Mike in a nutshell. All I can say is I forgot and I'm sorry, but hey, what will it be next? Oh, it'll be something <laughs> Not, and probably soon or probably it's already happened and I just haven't found it yet. Right. right. Whatever the next thing is. <laughs> At least we're not boring. Um, <laughs> what is it, bud? Can you tell us the story of the bird? Yeah, that was, uh, that was just wild. All right, let's move on. Recap, naked guy. Um, you know, the feedback I got from the naked guy story from last week's podcast, if you haven't listened to that, it's worth listening at least, at least a little bit. Um, crazy story. Um, but the, the recap that I got from a lot of people like my dad was like, Oh, you should, you were way too nice, way too nice. Um, and, and I probably was, but like I said on the thing, like I already knew I was being too nice, but I was like, I'm ready to flip that switch at any second. But if I can get away with not punching somebody, I would rather do that. Like I'm not around here trying to fight people, trying to exert, even when they come into my house, man, that's, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. I'm just thinking about it now. Like, yeah, I probably should have punched him, but like he was naked. <laughs> uh, from Instagram, from the, uh, Insta uh, my career podcast, Instagram, which is like the podcast Instagram, uh, MXPX means memes daily said, I'm inside your door. Walked right through the front door. I don't know if he's thinking about Three's Company. Straight to the back. Took a shower and had a small snack. Am I getting the song wrong? What song were you... What, what melody were you writing those lyrics to? Was it a rap? Was it like, I'm inside your door. Walked right through the front door. Okay, that doesn't work. You need to work on your rhyme. I'm inside your door. Walked right through the front door. Straight to the back. Took a shower and had a small snack. And a beer. <laughs> ah, I've gone crazy. I, I have had no sleep today. I just got back from Moscow, went to bed around 1130, didn't sleep much, tossed and turned, woke up at like three, went to the airport, fl flight left at five from, from Pullman, Moscow, uh, got to Seattle at six, drove my ass home, took a nap. So I, I slept a little bit, but I didn't really, you know, it's like a headache nap. More on that a little bit. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was all so worth it. Uh, Jam X podcast says, how to unwind and get good sleep. Something my brain knows nothing about. Hopefully you got some killer insight for me, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh, nothing. That wasn't about the naked guy. That was about some of the, the questions I was talking about, some of the things I was talking about in that episode. And, and uh, how to unwind after a long day, a long, crazy day, especially after finding a naked guy in your bathroom. Or maybe you find a, d a dead bird in your freezer. And there should not be a dead bird in your freezer because why? Why would there be? <sighs> Holly was like, you know, you should just, you could just leave it there and nature will do its thing. I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, you know, like a cat or a, Raccoon. Oh, a scav. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not always thinking of all the options necessarily. And I, and I think that's probably, probably a big reason why, uh, <laughs> why not, nothing to do with me personally, but America probably doesn't think of all the options when they're trying to run this country, the, the people that run the country. And uh, bad things ensue. So my scripts are a little more innocent. My wife finds a, finds a dead bird in the freezer. Eh, we can live with it. It's a good story. Let's go. Uh, Design Hill says, I can't, I can't with the naked intruder story. Cry a laugh, a cry laugh emoji, surprise emoji, broom. That was a great listen. Thank you. I probably, you know, I tend to drag on these stories quite a bit, but it's a podcast what i'm supposed to if, if if i'm not dragging on on a podcast where else am i 
Stony uh, Stony Point Road on Instagram says, "I hope you enjoyed that shower to the fullest." Yeah, seriously. Like, I wonder what is Gary from Belfair thinking about that experience right now? Does he know that that happened? Is it a dream? Is it a fever dream? I don't know. Was he traumatized? Was he like, that was really traumatic for me. That guy really, really, I guess it could have been worse, though, because he, he didn't beat me up. Or did he? I don't remember. Hmm. Yeah. He stole my jacket. But he gave me a beer? I don't remember that either. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Static Ease says, awesome edit. I think he's talking about the oh he's talking about the toilet edit on the instagram post um okay on facebook there wasn't a lot of comments not that there is usually but if you if you do want to comment on facebook it's my career podcast facebook group i post the episode there that's a great place actually it's even better than instagram but uh one person mandarin orange said can we stream your branding talk at the conference in idaho online because i was talking about going to the conference in that episode um yes you could have but i didn't see this until now so sorry uh, uh david camarina just says wild story ha 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 all good um but i'm gonna check back on these stories from time to time and check back and see if there's comments and i'll read your comments as well as put up your voicemails on stuff so yeah very cool all right um the brand build in moscow it's I went to a, a conference. It was a mini conference, really. It was put together very last minute by Darren Doan uh, and his company, Doan Creati Creative Agency. And it was called What to Expect When Brand Building. Doan Creative Agency, they really... I, well, I've worked with Darren on videos. That's how I know Darren. He's a, a video maker, a director, filmmaker, creative all the way. Uh, but he's come so far past that into business consulting and business building and brand building and really being thoughtful about how to get attention from people. When businesses want attention, bands want attention, people want attention, how do you do that? And Darren Doan really breaks down and, and is thoughtful about how he does that and, and he tries things and he... He asks questions, and so he asked me to be part of it, to come out and, and speak one of the days, and, and it wasn't like a, I didn't know this at the time. I just was like, okay, I might have to do a talk here. Uh, I should just have some general idea of what I'm going to say, and then I can wing it from there, but he brought me out, and it was more of him having the discussion and then bringing me onto the couch, asking me questions, having me go, and then steering me into but what was this like? What was that like? It was really in depth, and I know that he's going to be extracting a lot of a lot of clips from that conversation, and and it'll it'll be available um, on the Doan Creative Agency platforms. I would uh, I would look on Instagram. That's usually what, that's what I follow him on. But he they're 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 everywhere. Um, I'm sure they're on YouTube a little bit, but LinkedIn. If you're a business guy, LinkedIn. Um, so. What to expect when brand building? It's sometimes it's weird to put creative art, music, what I do, what I've done since I was a kid. It's hard to put that into a business lens, to look through it through a business lens because that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the music. I want to focus on the art. I want to focus on the message. I want to focus on... The fact that MXPX has just been working so hard to bring the best show to the audience, the best music we can to the audience, the best artwork we can, the best show posters, um, entertaining video clips of the band playing live. like That's what we're focused on. But if it doesn't all make sense, if you don't have a thought involved how do you know it's working, you know? Um, so there's a million things we could talk about, and I'm not going to go over the whole thing. And I told my story. I, I talked about the Poconecha Punk and how, you know, we saw all the best bands, all the biggest bands had a logo. Uh, even in punk rock, the Misfits, 
They had a logo, you know, face, a guy, a skeleton with the Reaper. Um, the Descendants, I was a huge fan of The Descendants, and they have Milo, very, like a stick cartoon drawing. So youthful, so fun, so cool, so nerdy. Um, and then when they started All, they did Allroy. They had the character Allroy. So at every turn, I would look and see, okay, there's not just music here, and not just these, these band guys. It's, it's, it's almost like you see... You don't see the band guys. You see this logo. That's more important than the band guys. It's more important than the image. And I didn't process all of this when deciding let's get let's get a logo, let's get a mascot. It was just much more primitive. It was like my favorite bands have a cool logo, and that's how I'm drawn to them. Let's do that. Let's maybe that'll help us. And it was just like a let's try it. And when we finally got signed to, you know, this was all happening as we were having to go, okay, what is, what's the artwork going to be like for our first album? Because now we got signed to Tooth and Nail, and here we are. And, you know, we talked to John Nissen, the art, artist that did and still does uh, the Pokemon at Punk. Now and again, he did the, the cover for the 2018 self-titled album. Um, but we asked him to do a punk guy, a punk character, running in a pit moshing and he came up with this very adult looking almost almost as if he had just seen the skanking guy from uh from from uh circle jerks and we're like that's a little too mean it was like it was like a skinhead guy with a plaid a plaid shirt tied around his waist big boots so we're like let's make it more youthful more cartoony and more fun and that was just my thought. I was like, it's just too much. And I remember talking to the other guys, Tom and Yuri. Not Tom. Tom wasn't in the band back then. So it must have been must have been Andy. Just, just showing them their artwork and going, what do you think? And, and everybody agreed. Yeah, let's, let's, let's make it more fun, more cartoony. And so that, that's the note that I sent back to John Nissen. And it was a fax, fax machine. Uh, and... He did another sketch a couple of days later, comes in, fax machine. That's the one. It was like a pencil version of what the, the Poconaccia record uh, cover looks like. It was amazing. I was like, I'm getting that tattooed. And it's tattooed. So that was the beginning of, of really branding our band. And like I said, back then, we didn't think of anything as business. We didn't really look at things like branding or advertising or marketing. It was not about that at all. It was just about how do we let people know that we're playing a show. It's just like we didn't have the words for it or the definitions. And you don't need the definitions. But when things grow, it helps to kind of know what's happening and why. And so as things grew, we, we didn't really, to be honest, pay any attention to the business we just you know it, it think things always kept growing it, there was no need to pay attention to the business but ownership wasn't a thing back then that was not on the horizon until the 2010s and on um but well it was on the horizon like 2007s and on like somewhere in there like around secret weapon when we did that record it was the first time we're like, maybe we could own more things in the future. Um, but that seed was, was buried deep and it didn't come out for years. And we needed, we needed help to make that come out. We needed Tom Chichilla to help us wade through all the red tape, uh, a lot of the administration kind of things. Ah, bands are terrible. Creative artists are terrible at administration, at management, at secretarial work, paperwork. That red tape will kill just about half of us, uh, if not more. Maybe like it's more like 90% of us. Um, but, you know, that's why artists will give up a lot of what they could have or own just because they don't want to deal with that hardship, the paperwork, as hard as that or easy as that may be for some people, right? So that's just a little truth right there. Artists really are not good with the fine details. Um, so what to expect when brand building like it was everything from social media to legacy 
to it's going to take years and years and years to the fact that there's no one to hire. You can't you can't hire just some guy with a camera because that person might not know what to shoot and might not see a vision of this is what people care about and this is what the moment is and I better capture this moment. There's so much more going on with culture and the culture of building your legacy or brand, whatever it is you want people to know. It's about communication, really. That's what I took away from from what Darren was saying. He's like, how, how can you communicate every day or as often as possible with your audience? And who are you trying to find? Because not everybody's trying to go for all the likes you can get. Sometimes you just need that one person to see that post and that's the client that you get. If you're a business that, that picks up clients, you, if you sell machines, you sell a product and you're out there trying to make accounts, somebody that's going to come back to you for parts and more of the things, you know, what, whatever. Like I was talking to John Sacco. He's the owner and, and founder of, of Sierra. What is it? Sierra Recycling and Metalworks. It's like I'm not – it's Sierra – but it's a big recycling thing, and they have all these machines, these these five hundred thousand dollar machines, two hundred thousand dollar machines that that press metal and recycle the metal, and and they're one of the only companies that can actually do it all on site. So he sees the whole process, and so they make their machines work the best they can for the whole process. And so when you buy a machine from them, it sounds like a commercial. I'm just repeating what he was telling me. When you buy a machine from them, they get a better quality machine because the design is designed with the person that's actually buying it in mind. You know, you know how that goes? You know, it's like an ergonomical chair. You're like, okay, this was built by humans for humans. Feels good to sit in it. Sometimes you, you get a chair that's just like, what is this? It's just like it doesn't even, it's, it's just wrong. And some products can be like so that's what sierra nevada does like and and they do probably a lot more than i even know he does his own docu-series he's got two different docu-series two seasons on amazon uh or amazon video and uh so these guys are just really just in their own fields making it happen and they're not precious about uh what they post online they just need to be communicating to their people and for somebody like a John Sacco, he's communicating to other CEOs and founders and business guys. You know, this guy's hanging out with presidents and politicians and big, big, you know, biggity uppity type people in, in society. I don't really rub elbows with those types of people as much. So it was kind of fun getting to, to, to cut it up with John because he's a rock star in his world just like I'm a rock star in mine. And he recognized that. And I recognize that it's like we kind of gravitated towards each, each other in that way. Um, a couple other guys I met like that for sure. And, and, and Darren Doan is like that. He, he's a rock star. And uh, when he asked me to come out, it was a no brainer. I just had to check my schedule cause it was tight. Cause I'm, I'm there in the week of going to Denver. So I'm, I'm still going to be going to Denver uh, as I'm pre-recording this, and MXPX is playing with, with no effects. So about to do that. Wasn't sure how the schedule would work out, but I was good to go for the beginning of the week, and so it was amazing. The food, the steak, shout out to Natalie Doan. She catered the event. She she had somebody prepare the steaks, and and, and she did all the rest of everything, which was all just gourmet, amazing food, uh, I got I gorged myself every every night after it was done, so it was like a noon to five kind of thing, um, with a break in the middle, and it was very laid back and very much like you could walk around if you needed to get something and do whatever. But but it was really just like soaking in, discussing, talking about all of everything that comes into running a business, trying to build a business in today's culture. Uh, with today's technology and tools. And of course, we talked about AI a little bit, but AI is just uh, mostly, honestly, it's a tool. So it's just another tool, just like you should get in tune with 
with uh, with Facebook or Amazon or Google with ads and things like that, you might want to be in tune with some AI things, um, helping you find clients, customers, whatever it is. And this is outside the MXPX realm. I'm, I'm speaking business, other people's businesses at this point, but I, MXPX would use AI in a different way. We'd use it um, maybe for like ticket sales and things like that. Um, but I don't, you know, and we're going to use it for some things in the future, but we don't really use it for anything when it comes to music, the creation of music, the creativity of whatever we do. It all comes from here. And then you can filter it through some AI if you need to for certain things. But right now we're pretty much using it on the, on the real just business end of things and not on the creative. Um, and I know a lot of companies are using it on the creative which is not a necessarily a bad thing. It, it, honestly, whatever you can do to get it done is so hard to win in this world in whatever category you may be in that sure, you should use or try certain tools, even AI. It's not cheating, it's a tool. Um, and the people that are going to win are the people that have the good ideas and actually apply that through the tool. You can't let AI give you the idea because that's an idea that's already there. I use AI personally just to organize thoughts. I'll be like, can you just organize this into bullet points for me? That's like, why not? Because it just saves you 15 minutes, for me 15 minutes. Something that would take somebody five minutes takes me 15. So I use AI for that. But I wouldn't, I would, I would take it seriously, but I wouldn't overly rely on it. It depends on who you are. It depends on where you are in the world. But I think everybody, no matter where you are in, in your industry, what you're doing, you're going to run into AI if you haven't already. You probably are already and you just don't know it yet. Um, I've been guilty of that because I just found out we use AI for something. I didn't just find out. I found out a while back. But this year, I found out this year. So it's like, oh, yeah, well, of course, you know, all these, all the companies we work with, Live Nation and, and these like AEG um, the guys that put on Punk and Drublick and, uh, and all that, they all use the same tools that MXPX use. We all use these like AI tools. And it, and it was the same kind of thing back when, before they changed the laws where they were data collecting and, and scraping all the data from all these people and customers from Facebook, from, from Twitter, from everything, right? Scraping the data. That law got changed to where now you have to okay it with a cookie. Like that's the thing that comes up. I learned this from Darren. The thing that comes up on the screen that says, are you okay with cookies tracking you? And you say, okay, or you say no to all. I always say no to all. But that's because of the law that says you can't just do this without telling the customer or the person that's you know on your site. So things change things. And then it's like, you just constantly have to adapt. Okay. That's going to be a little different. So back before you could, back before when everything was scraped, like Facebook would just scrape all the, the data points for you. Uh, and by the way, I'm only speaking from somebody that's heard about this. I've never actually done it myself. I'm not in there on the computer on, on uh, Pixel or whatever, you know. So like we used to use this thing called Pixel. Maybe we still use it, but the way it works has changed because of the laws because of the data collection laws. Um, but Pixel was what we'd use to like advertise people. We'd find people that like MXPX, find people that like punk rock, find you know, that's what you do. You find your audience. And it's not always straight through somebody that likes MXPX because you can't always find that person. Maybe somebody likes MXPX and they've never expressed that, but they like punk rock or they like, what else would an MXPX guy like? Oh, skateboarding, uh, I don't know, video, video games. We've been on so many video games. Who doesn't like video games? So things like that. I, I don't know. I'm no expert. Always learning. Some of this stuff is very, very basic. And some of this stuff was like, oh, yeah, that's big picture solidifies the big ideas. Now, I think a big takeaway is, is if you try to post like on Instagram, every day for 30 days most people cannot do it it doesn't matter what you post post anything you want most people will quit even at day 24 which is wild 
And I, I know exactly what that is. It's like this fear of what are people going to think of me? Like, what are you doing? Why are you posting so much? You're like all over. Uh, there's all these different fears. What are people going to think of me? It, it goes on and on. I could, I could keep going on this subject for the whole thing, but I really want to get to some of these, some of these beautiful voicemails because we're going to recap the Bremerton week, show weekend, Bremerton in Portland. And I want to hear from you about it. Um, MXPX is going to be in Tacoma. I already told you that with the drowns going to be great. So let's get to, let's get to some voicemails. I think we're there. Are we there? We're there. Here we go. Hey, this is Sarah. I'm a big fan of your guys. And, uh, I just wanted to say the Bremerton show Friday night was so good. Oh my gosh. Needless to say, that this is probably one of maybe two or three times in my life where I will get to go see a band as great as you guys play them in their hometown and just feel so much love from the crowd. I couldn't believe how fast the seats sold out. So while we wanted to get into the pit, I was okay with getting some bucket seats up in the nosebleed section. But... Still had a wonderful time, great vibes, wonderful time meeting you guys. I know I've maybe seen you around town like a handful of times. Uh, in case you don't know, I like to live in Bremerton. And I've lived here probably about six, going on seven years now, so since 2017. And um, a really funny story, actually. Uh, I have been a fan of your guys since probably 2004, 2005. Back in the days when, you know, you go and you purchase one song at a time from iTunes and you carry around that one song and you listen to it on repeat for like 12 times in a row. Well, anyway, so my brother tells me while he's driving me out, we're moving to Bremerton quite literally. And he goes, hey, we should play that song. And I was like, what song? And he goes, oh, you know, you like MXPX, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, I'll bet you never heard this song. We have to play this song. So we played it. <laughs> we were going through Iowa and we were playing that song. And then um, just as a treat to my brother, I took him to sit in the seat next to mine. And we were just so ecstatic here. And you play that song. It was so great. And uh, anyways, I still firmly believe that music has the power to save lives. And you, your guys just does just that. You really do. You guys always manage to bring me out of a funk when I listen to songs like Call In Sick. Um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite ones that gets me through work. And, uh, oh, you forgot to mention Crazy Eric. So oh. Crazy Eric, in case you guys don't okay. know, uh, listeners out there, where else can you get a hot dog with cheese on a tortilla shell? I mean, seriously. Anyway, thanks so much. Take care. Thank you so much for the call, Sarah. Um, that is so cool. I'm so glad you moved to Bremerton. So glad you got to bring your brother to the show. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, all it just it, 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 the gratitude is welling up in my eyes. You could see the shininess of my eyes if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, it really just it's like heartwarming. It means my heart is cold most of the time so like it, it needs these calls it needs to hear these messages because we get jaded we get jaded so i appreciate it it, it means a lot it really does crazy erics yeah i forgot about that i really like crazy erics i get the burgers i just go simple i get burgers but we took the whole band and crew well not not a road crew but just trey and and uh, I think uh, Shane Smith was there, and um, photographer Shane Smith. Uh, so he, we brought Ryan Furlot, our producer, um, during the Find a Way Home recording session. We were almost done. It was one of the last couple days of the session, and we were like, "Let's go, let's go get some burgers. Let's go to Crazy Eric's." And we all went to Crazy Eric's and ordered, and waited out in the parking lot. And, and uh, it was a good, it was a good memory for me it was great so 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around Bremerton and being a, a good steward of the area. Hey, it's- and here's actually Sarah again. She called back in with a little, little uh, post script, so I'll play that for you now. Hey, it's Sarah again. I just left a voicemail message, and uh, I have to say this, too. Your daughter blew us away that night, and honestly, I'm kind of glad that things lined up the way that they did, because as much as we love these Ataris, and we're very sad about that, I am so glad that we got to hear her sing live. Oh, my gosh. Just blew us away. I mean, I already heard her on Instagram singing, just absolutely amazing. You know, you're raising them right. You are raising them right, Mike. All right. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you, Sarah. That that means even more, even more. And I do want to address the Ataris real quick. Um, in a way, even though we're bummed that the Ataris couldn't make it, um, and I think Chris is okay now, uh, but... It became a different kind of show that I feel like was just even better. It wasn't just another stop on the tour. It was now, this is the only place you're going to get this this show. It was already that because we made some things happen in Bremerton that weren't going to happen in other places. But my daughter coming out, uh, me coming out, introducing the Fibs, my daughter coming out, singing Linoleum with me. That was, it was just a, a, a memory, like one of, one of those memories that I'll, I'll cherish my whole life. And, and, and so that wouldn't have happened if Chris hadn't gotten sick. So sometimes it's, tragedy can be serendipitous. Um, obviously, there's probably one or two people in that audience that had their heart set on the Ataris. So barring those people, I think everybody else was kind of like, actually, this is cool too, like, this is actually really cool. Uh, and then the Fibs, you know, they really had the odds stacked against them. They hadn't practiced at all. They hadn't been a band for, you know, six months, really. They hadn't been playing together. And they came together, and they made it happen, and I'm so proud that they, they really, like, rose to the occasion. So uh, let's, hear, let's hear another voicemail about the Bremerton Show. Mike, what's up, man? It's Sonny from Portland, Oregon. Um, I ran merch for you guys one time at the Crystal Ballroom when you played with uh, Screeching Weasel. Um, anyways, always been a long-time fan. Um, went to the show on Saturday night at the Admiral. Was going to go to Portland, but I, my old legs would rather sit in the balcony than stand out in the hot heat and watch you guys. Uh, but also, dude, the opportunity to go see you guys in your own hometown was pretty damn rad. Uh, flew my nephew up from Southern California. He's always seen me in like an MXPX hoodie. And so he's always wanted to check out the band. So I said, fly up here to Portland. We'll drive up to Bremerton and uh, we'll take a ferry to Seattle, spend a day up there, go see the show, have fun. It was a blast. He loved it. Uh, but man, we stayed in Silverdale. Uh, which I stayed at before, and we went to, I believe it was Silver City, um, the brewery there, and we had this guy, our server was named Aaron. Best customer service I've ever had um, in terms of, like, taking care of his guests, you know? So uh, the pot pie was amazing. The tacos were great. My nephew loved it. I loved it. Great time. And a great show, man. It was a blast. We loved it. Um, and uh, I was bummed that we missed mentioned that you played uh, um, The Wonder Years on Friday night. Um, probably my favorite MXPX song of all time. Um, but still, Saturday night rocked our faces off. You guys are amazing. Loved it. I do have a question for you. Um, I've always wondered this, but have you guys ever opened with Punk Rock Show? I know it's the quintessential MXPX You're at the Show song, but I ever, I've always wondered if you've ever opened with it. Or maybe open with it and then close with it again. I don't know. But um, that's like an in-your-face, like, let's get this shit going. Um, anyways, love you guys. Great show. Um, and uh, can't wait to see you guys again. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for the call, Sonny. Thanks for coming out to Bremerton, bringing your nephew. That's epic. Love that. Now, your question is a good one, and I actually just... 
I was just talking to somebody about this actually over at the conference in Moscow. Um, yes, the question is yes, we have opened with Punk Rock Show, but let me preface that with with a set list. Timing is important, and where you do certain songs makes a difference. So you kind of like get the crowd warmed up, going, and then you you keep it hard, 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 and then you let them down thoughtful a little bit breathe and then back up boom 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 come back down so it's a roller coaster and when you don't do the proper stops on the roller coaster it just doesn't the the crowd doesn't know what to do um so you kind of almost have to direct um so with that being said back in i think 1996 it was punk rock show was our biggest song it was our closer we were touring on life in general, but we still had tons of teenage politics songs in the set. Um, the show was Social Distortion, Dance All Crashers, MXPX, and opening the show, Old 97s. So we actually went on after Old 97s, and we're like, this is a short set. We only have you know time for seven eight ten songs i don't know what it was half hour set and why don't we try punk rock show first and we learned a valuable lesson about timing and the timing was for us terrible because we came out of the gate swinging with punk rock show but people aren't ready that early in the in the night we're, we're the second band they're waiting they're social distortion fans so we come out swinging and nobody does any. They're just watching us. And so we've wasted our whole best best song. Our closing song is done. And so we've got our whole rest of our set. That's fine. But like it really kind of ruined our set. It ruined the vibe because timing really matters. You have to hit them with a good opener that makes sense. Something, something that gets people hyped. But... At the same time, people are kind of just like listening to see what it is that's going on. And MXPX, traditionally, the crowd starts a little slow. A couple songs in, then they start moving more and more and more. They get more comfortable. Their inhibitions fall by the wayside. Maybe they've had another shot, another drink. Whatever that may be, it takes a couple songs for this crowd Everywhere in the world almost, maybe not Brazil, maybe not Moscow, Russia, uh, pretty crazy over there. But in the U.S., it doesn't matter where we are, it takes a few, and then the crowd starts getting rowdy. And so we push it, push it, push it, and then we bring it down, do a ballad, do some sort of, you know, like a, a heard that sound kind of song. It's mid-tempo. But then let's go back up. You know, so that's very important, and we learned a valuable lesson back then. Don't do punk rock, punk rock show first. So <laughs> it's not that we have to do it last, but do it towards the end. Do it towards the end. Let's Ride is, is also a song that we wouldn't want to do first. You know, it's a song that we really want people to be already in tune and loving the show. We've proven this is a worthy thing for you to be doing tonight. Now we're going to hit you with some real bangers. Let's Ride, Responsibility, Chick Magnet, Punk Rock Show, like things that, you know, different levels of whatever, but they're all songs that really, really slay and, um, and, and are very popular with the live audience. So um, My Life Story is another one of those, but that, that used to be our opener forever. Now it's not a closer, but it's almost like a, we can put it anywhere. We can put My Life Story anywhere. But that's a rare song where not every song can be a first song. Not every song can be a first song of an encore set or in the middle of an encore set or just towards the end of a set. Like, not every song can do that. My Life Story can. It's one of those just weird mid, mid-tempo, everybody knows that chorus. It's fun. So, yeah, it, it's not rocket science, but it is science. <laughs> that sounded ridiculous i'm sure clip that out <laughs> all right let's do one more and i'll let you all do your week 
and I'll see you in Tacoma if you're local. Hopefully, we'll lo- it's going to be a punk show. It's going to be it's going to be real small and real fun, and we're just going to celebrate. So, mxpeaks.com, check out for the tickets, and then uh, we'll see you in San Pedro, October fourth, the last No Effects weekend in Southern California, the LA Play. It's going to be great. Um, MXPX. You don't want to miss us with no effects. It's an event. It's so much fun. So on that note, let's get to one more voicemail. And, uh, and yeah, here we go. This is Josh. Hey, Mike. It's uh, Josh Jones calling again. Uh, I just wanted to call in uh, about last weekend. Uh, so uh, started off, I had tickets to the Punkin', Punkin Drolic down in Portland. Uh, go, went down there with one of my friends. Um, the Bremerton show's. Uh, the tickets ran, like, I sold out and were announced, before, like, while I was out to sea, so I didn't even know about it until I got back, uh, and then a little bit of bummer that they were sold out, but, um, I looked around for some tickets, couldn't find any, and then actually Chris contacted me uh, a couple of days before the Bremerton shows, uh, and, and I, I turned them down, I figured out the, the money that I had to spend there last minute, better use spent in Portland, but unbeknownst to me, my wife had actually purchased uh, some tickets to the show the day of the Bremerton one. So I ended up going. Uh, I took my, my daughter, Emmeline. Uh, she is about to be nine. Uh, so we went. It was her first show. Unfortunately, she got sick right before the Ataris. So I blame I blame the Ataris. I blame Chris Rowe for that one. Uh, but anyways, um, my wife was able to drop my other uh, son, Max, he's 10. So he was able to, to go there with me. Um, it was a good show. Um, your daughter did a really good job. Uh, that's, that's so amazing that you're able to do that with her. Um, let's see, what else? So it was disappointing that we didn't get to see Ataris, but, uh, the Fibs are awesome. I've seen them a few times. Uh, and when, <laughs> when they were announcing it, I told my son, I'm like, you know what the Fibs stand for? Uh, and, I, and I won't spoil it for everyone else. Everyone else can go and look that up, but uh, he kind of chuckled at that, you know, like young kids have, like silly jokes. But, yeah, that show was awesome. It was one of the better ones, I thought. Uh, my kids love Friday Tonight. I can't tell you how many times I've had, uh, you know, a, a children circle pit in my living room to that song specifically. Uh, they, they really like that they – that um, the uh, quarters is in the video – so they've been there a few times. I think it's great. Uh, moving on to the Portland show. Portland was awesome. You know, uh, you guys did a really good job. Uh, no effects was awesome. The you know it was, it was good, good time, good vibes. Overall, uh, great weekend. You know, I had, was a little bit bummed I wasn't going to be able to see you guys, and then my wife surprised me. Um, that was really cool. And then able to take my kids uh, to see you guys was was great as well. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks, man. Cheers. Right on, Josh. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for the call. That's a great story. So glad you got to go because those Bremerton shows were, they're just, they were epic. They were, they were just like a, a beacon, you know, that'll be there. A great memory, a great experience. Uh, Bremerton and, and, and the MXPX family, MXPX fans, they came, MXPX Nation, they came out. In full force, it was awesome to see everybody, to hear everybody singing along. I mean, I have those in ears in, so it's a really hard for me to hear. Actually, you know, and you're you're singing so much louder than I actually realize you are. But I think that kind of keeps me just in tune with singing whatever. You know, not that I'm not going to forget the lyrics to say "Can't Keep Waiting" or something. But hey, it happens. But I I just. I was blown away by Bremerton, and then to go from Bremerton two nights sold out to the No Effects show, which was huge. Uh, I'm sure it was sold out or close to sold out. And to go on right before them, to to be given that torch, to be given that respect, and it means a lot. And, and, and the crowd, not only by the crew and the bands that we were playing with up there, but the crowd, the crowd really went crazy. You know, not everybody was probably an MXPX fan, but they respect it. They were like, "Okay, all right, cool." And that's all. That's all I could ask for, is is to stand up there in the face of people that don't know you, 
and to deliver, deliver something worth seeing, worth hearing. So I think we did great. I uh, felt great about the set. And I can't wait to do it again and again and again. I just love playing this this thing called music. And MXPX being the vehicle all these years has been so much fun. Honestly, that's that's our brand build. MXPX is fun. And when you come to a show, you're going to have a good time. Just, just let yourself go. Let your in inhibitions go. Just have a great time. You won't be disappointed. All right. Shout out to Bob McKnight. If you want to call in, please do. 360-830-6660. MXPX.com for tickets. Please listen to MXPX. The new album is Find A Way Home. Yeah, I've been songwriting. I've been working on a few new songs. It's going to be a while till you hear it, I'm sure. But uh, I'm out there, people. I'm out there. So until next week, peace. Peace.